Hello, and welcome to The Drake's Vance. I'm Mitch the Quack, and I hope your days are less quack than mine. Today we're going to be looking at the powers of Amethor. I just want to preface this by saying if you've watched any previous content of mine, specifically Mozilla's Identity Explained and Time Magic Explained, then you're going to know where this is going very fast. However, this time, I may have actually found something that proves those quack theories. If you'd like to support the creation of this content, hit the subscribe button. If you like this content, hit the like button. And if you'd like to stay notified on the quackery, hit the bell, or you can follow me on Twitter. Okay, so to begin with, this is a quack theory. An extremely quack theory. It's not the most quack theory, but it's still pretty quack. With that said though, the base of this theory is pretty simple. And if the line of logic is correct, then this is going to explain a lot. Now, I need to establish a few basic rules. The reason I'm doing this is because if you don't agree with these rules, then it's certain you're not going to agree with this theory. Rule 1. All magics in World of Warcraft have distinguishable traits. To simplify that, do you agree magic in World of Warcraft isn't a complete mess? As in, do you agree there is some type of magical system in place? So, for example, the light and the void can both raise the dead. They can both create the same effect. That effect in this case being resurrection. However, the light specifically relates to hope, valor, healing, etc, etc, while the void relates to fear, despair, consumption, etc, etc, proving the two magics have intrinsically different traits. What I'm basically asking is, do you think all magics, including order, chaos, life and death, and the elements in World of Warcraft, have identifiable traits and effects? I believe they do. Rule 2. Amethyl has control over time. This is pretty straightforward. Considering everything Amethyl has done, do you think he can manipulate time? Yes or no? If the answer is no, then you will definitely disagree with this theory. Rule 3. Akunda. Yes, the Thunder Lizard from Voldoon. Does Akunda have the ability to take away the memories of others? Once again, this is pretty straightforward. If you have experienced the Voldoon questline, do you think a part of Akunda's power set is the ability to remove the memories of others? To my knowledge, the answer is yes, Akunda does have that power. So, to recap these rules. Rule 1. All magic in World of Warcraft have distinguishable traits. Rule 2. Amethyl has some form of control over time. Rule 3. Akunda can and does take away the memories of others. If you disagree with any of these rules, then you are not going to like this theory. Amethyl has the ability to manipulate time. It's unknown at this point what magic Amethyl uses to manipulate time. The common assumption is Amethyl uses arcane magic to manipulate time. This is generally because he's a titan, who's a part of the pantheon, who are innately aligned with order, and arcane magic is the magic that is aligned with order. Where this is a reasonable line of thinking, I think it is incorrect. The main reason I think it is incorrect is because of the dragon aspects Malagos and Nostormu, and in turn the titan Norganon. When the dragon aspects were turned into dragon aspects, they were empowered by the Pantheon and bestowed a portion of the Titan's power. Amethuld empowered Norse Normu and created the Bronze Dragonflight, the Protectors of Time. Norganon empowered Malgos and created the Blue Dragonflight, the Protectors of Arcane Magic. There is a very distinct difference between Norse Normu and Malgos, and in turn Amethuld and Norganon. One side specifically looks after time, the other specifically looks after arcane magic. I do not think this distinction is by accident. Arcane magic may be able to manipulate time, but as the first rule points out, different magics can have the same effect, but still be innately different. The effect in this case is the ability to manipulate time. The two magics in this case are arcane magic as used by Norganon, and for lack of a better term at this point, time magic as used by Anon Thor. Basically, the implication here is there are two ways to manipulate time. One uses arcane magic, the other uses quote unquote time magic. The question that comes from here though is what constitutes time magic, and in turn, what constitutes Amethyl's power? We know Norgonon uses arcane magic, one of the six base magics in World of Warcraft. So the question is, what base magic or magics does Amethyl use? The closest understanding of what magics Amethyl uses comes in the form of the Keepers Odin and Raden. The reason for this is the creation of the Keepers is expressly described like this. 
the members of the Pantheon imbued a number of their servants with their specific likeness and powers to lead the rest of the Titanforged. These empowered beings were called the Keepers. Though they would develop their own personalities in time, they would forever after bear the mark and abilities of their makers. Raden and Odin's abilities are supposed to represent Amunthul's abilities. With this in mind, it is reasonable to infer that Amunthul has control over the storm, as seen with Raden and Lei Shen. And just as a quick reminder, Lei Shen, the Thunder King, stole Raden's power, and Raden was empowered by Amunthul. It is also reasonable to infer that Amunthul has some command over the light, as seen with Odin and the Halls of Valor, especially considering Odin's abilities during the Trial of Valor raid encounter. I will add though, this is not mentioning that during the same raid encounter, there are indications Odin can use the storm to some degree, and in Pandaria and Aldum, there are multiple indications Raden could once use the light to some degree. Overall though, these two keepers bear the mark and abilities of their maker, that maker being Amethul. Both keepers respectively show the ability to manipulate the light and the storm. It is then reasonable to infer their maker, Amethul, controls these powers, assumedly in unison. So, basically, Amethul's power is a fusion of the light and the storm. What does this mean about Amethul's power to manipulate time? It means a fusion of the storm and the light gives Amunthor, and assumedly anybody, the ability to control time in World of Warcraft. But, because things are never that simple and there's a lot more, from here on I highly suggest you really, really start paying attention. Amunthor is not the only creature in World of Warcraft that controls the storm and the light. There is another creature that specifically controls the storm and the light. That creature is Akunda. Yes, that thunder lizard from Baldoon. How do we know this? Firstly, there's the copious amounts of lightning surrounding his temple, and the fact Akunda is a thunder lizard. Secondly, there is Akunda's boon, Holy Storm. Not only that though, a trait the light consistently shows is the need to heal and relieve pain, while also rewarding valor and bravery. Akunda's Tale of Loa consistently hints at these traits, with lines like, the brave be full of wonder, his will can ease your pain, one day he hits with all the force, the next he be kind. When your courage goes astray, when doubt be in your heart, think of the calm before the storm. Now I could break down the entire tale, going into which lines and specific words relate to the light, and their equivocation, but that would take too long. The main point here is that there is definitely a reference to the light within Akunda's tale. Akunda also gives redemption to the exiles of Zandalar by exercising dark memories and giving them a new path. Archon Confessor Paltress from the Trial of Champions back in Wrath of the Lich King technically does the same thing. Instead, she just creates a boss encounter for us. The only difference between Paltress and Kunda is Paltress is heavily aligned with the light alone. Overall though, the main point here is Kunda uses a combination of the light and the storm. Now, if you remember the rules from the start, then you've probably realised there is a contradiction here. Certain magics have certain traits and effects, and the traits and effects of the storm and the light combined is the ability to manipulate time as seen with Amethul. Yet, with Akunda using the same combination of magic, he seems to be able to purge creatures of certain memories instead of manipulating time. This raises one question. Why do two creatures that specifically use the storm and the light get vastly different effects considering they are using the same magics. There are two likely possibilities. The first is Amethul and Akunda can use each other's abilities as well as their own. So, for example, Amethul can manipulate time as well as manipulate the memories of others, and the same goes for Akunda. If I was to guess, in this scenario, to get the different effects from the same magic, a creature would have to mess with the ratios of light magic to storm magic. This is a possibility, but I believe it to be the least likely possibility, because where certain magics do have multiple traits and effects, there is usually a closely related theme. For example, the light has hope and valor. Life has renewal and growth. Time and memory can share a commonality, but it's a contradictory commonality in my eyes that is not as closely related as other traits present in other magics. 
The second possibility, and the more quacked one, which I'm subscribed to, is Akunda and Amenthal use the same powers, just on vastly different scales. What I'm basically saying is Rule 2 and Rule 3 are not contradictory, but both are accurate. What I'm basically saying is time in WoW works how we, IRL, understand a memory. In other words, in some strange capacity, Azeroth and our actions on Azeroth are taking place within a memory. Basically, our characters and our world are in a living memory. And just so you don't get lost, what I'm saying is Amenthal does exactly what Akunda does. He literally removes memories. Except instead of removing memories from a person, Amenthal's power is so vast he can remove memories from planets, aka Azeroth. Or, more likely, he can remove memories from the universe itself, altering the present of the universe. I mean, think about it like this. If I was to remove a defining memory of your life, something you've kept for the longest time that has shaped who you are today, you would change as a person. You would be a different person. Now, if this was to happen to the universe, the same thing would occur. The universe would literally shift and become a different universe, which technically equates to time manipulation. Proof of this idea, time is a memory theory, does not only pertain to Amethyl and Akunda having the same powers though. If you apply this theory to World of Warcraft, a lot of unrelated things start to align perfectly. The first and foremost is the bronze dragonflies. I mean, have you ever wondered why bronze and why sand? The why bronze part is shockingly the simplest answer in the book. The reason the bronze dragons are bronze is because they have some relation to the light. As in, no joke, the colour of the bronze was probably their biggest giveaway to what they're aligned to since day one. Similar to how the blue and green dragons colouring show their magical alignment. As for the why sand part, a fun fact about sand is it's great at being manipulated by static electricity as in the form of electricity you can create with a balloon and your hair. Why sand probably relates to the fact the bronze dragons are using some form of low level storm magic and the light to manipulate the memories of the universe, or at the very least Azeroth. And if you're still a bit skeptical about the static electricity stuff, I highly suggest looking at Saturn's moon Titan. I know the name's distracting, but that is by coincidence. Just make sure to look up what grows on the surface of Titan. The other reason as to why sand, which relates to the World of Warcraft universe being a living memory, is Nosdormu's probable inspiration. That inspiration being a legend of the Sandman, as in the Sandman that definitely puts people to sleep, but depending on which folklore you're looking at, will either give you good dreams, or do horrible things to you and give you nightmares. How does this inspiration tie into everything? Well, a fun fact about memories is during the REM period of your sleep cycle, which we all go through when we sleep, your mind does not only dream, but also consolidates memories. So, if WoW exists in a living memory, and the Bronze Dragons just happen to tamper with those memories to ensure good outcomes, similar to how Sandman puts people to sleep to give them good dreams, what do you think that makes the timeways? The answer is, that makes the timeways the memory consolidation part of assumably Azrael's sleep, or quite possibly, the universe itself. And here are the kickers that tie it all together. We've known for ages Azeroth is asleep, so everything I've stated is within the realms of possibility. We've also known for ages Azeroth has had dreams, the most well-known one being the Emerald Dream, and in turn, the Nightmare. Now, here's a fact I know you're going to want to hear. The non-REM period of your sleep cycle relates specifically to growth, recovery, and nightmares. So, what am I saying? Well, what I'm saying is if we as players exist within what equates to a living memory, then not only does the Emerald Dream make sense, as it basically represents Azeroth's non-REM sleep stage, lining up with how the Emerald Dream affects Azeroth, but what we also have is Azeroth's REM sleep stage and all her memories represented by the timeways, lining up with how they affect Azeroth. 
And the further joke is Norgunon's title, Dreamweaver, ties the arcane into this as well. Because as this theory has basically been saying, manipulating time in WoW is basically like manipulating memories. So, this means arcane's temporal magic isn't technically tampering with time, it's actually tampering with the memories of Azeroth and or possibly the universe. This implies arcane magic, the magic Norgonon the Dream Weaver relates to, is somehow connected to the REM sleep stage of sleep, similar to how the time waves are related to the REM sleep stage of sleep. And as Norgonon's title Dream Weaver implies, it should be safe to assume arcane magic, the power Norgonon controls, relates to the dream half of the REM sleep stage, giving quite an explainable reason as to why arcane magic relates to knowledge and innovation, and why Keepers Loken and Mimron gained the abilities they did from Norgonon. What's the saying again? To accomplish great things we must not only act but also dream, not only plan but also believe. That might be a bit out of context but saying I've always lived with is the best ideas come from dreams. Oh and yes, what I am implying here is the Emerald Dream and the Timeways are very similar to each other but what I'm also implying is that there is an arcane version of the Emerald Dream and all the Timeways somewhere out there in the universe. And so just as a full recap, Anathal and Akunda use the same type of magic. They use a combination of the light and the storm. This combination gives them the power over memories. It just happens though, Amethul is expressly related to time manipulation. So either A, both entities can manipulate time and memories, which I believe to be unlikely, or B, as quacked as it sounds, time in World of Warcraft is a memory and the World of Warcraft universe, or at the very least Azeroth, exists within a living memory. This revelation ties time magic in World of Warcraft to the manipulation of memories. In turn, due to the prevalence of the concept of sleep and dreaming in WoW, the timeways can be connected to the memory consolidation aspect of the REM sleep stage. This connection is mainly due to the Bronze Dragons, in particular Nosdormu, showing considerable inspiration from the RR legend of the Sandman, and in turn a relation to sleep and dreams, while also being known as the Keeper of Time. This connection to sleep and the REM sleep stage then offers prudent equivocation for the Emerald Dream, as the Emerald Dream and the non REM stage of sleep share uncanny similarities. This is then followed by arcane magic. As a being that has mastered arcane magic, Norgonon holds the title of Dream Weaver. The implication of this title, within the context of this theory, is arcane magic also relates to the REM stages of sleep, specifically the dream aspect of the REM sleep stage. I know this all sounds a bit quacked, but for all those that have had any inkling towards the idea that Azeroth is Azathoth from the Cthulhu mythos, this is basically a theory that ties in that idea without expressly mentioning the idea, which I have generally found to be a very good indication as to the accuracy of theories. But with all that said, do you think this is plausible or possible? Leave a comment. The best speculation is always done with the community. If you prefer to talk about your lore though, I usually hang out in the Shinies and Lucky Dudes Discord. And even if I'm not there, the small community that usually is, it's amazing to talk lore, speculation, or anything World of Warcraft with. So, until next time, have a nice day!